Hello boys and girls and everybody else. So welcome again to another science video lesson. And in this video lesson, we will go into talk about a physics topic, the electromagnetic spectrum. So in this uh, video lesson, we will do, going to discover what is an electromagnetic spectrum, what are the properties that includes the electromagnetic spectrum and other things that will revolve around that topic. So stay, watch, and listen as we discover what is the concept of electromagnetic spectrum in this science video lesson. So let's start. All right. So here we are in our uh, lesson for this uh, video lesson. So the, the lesson that we have right here is the electromagnetic spectrum. So what is the electromagnetic spectrum? And how is it related to our previous video lesson, which is the electric motor, which, it, which is the electric motor and the electromagnetic induction. All right. So before we uncover what is electromagnetic spectrum is all about, let's have this one first. Okay. So we have right here a picture of an Andromeda galaxy and this galaxy is 2.537 million light years from Earth. All right. So what does it mean? All right. What does it mean? If you are traveling the speed of light, if you are traveling the speed of light, so that is the distance that the light will going to travel from Earth, all right? So that's the total distance that the light will travel from Earth to this uh, galaxy that we have. So small trivia or short trivia about this galaxy. So million years or several million years from now, this galaxy will collide with the Milky Way. So it will be a... Uh, it will be a uh, great uh, view from the sky that you will see two galaxies all right, side by side, okay, as they uh, collide with our galaxy, which is the Milky Way. So what does it mean? All right, if you want to go to this planet, or rather galaxy, if you want to go to this galaxy, uh, you will need to travel 2.5 million years, all right, to reach this galaxy if you are traveling at the speed of light. All right, if you are traveling at the speed of light. But if you are not traveling at the speed of light, you will take... A trillion or even or you take billion or even trillion years to reach this uh, galaxy all right so if someone is looking at the earth from this galaxy all right if someone is looking at the earth from this galaxy they will see the earth not with humans all right on it but with other uh, creature like dinosaur who lives around 2.5 million years ago here in this planet Alright, so meaning to say the light travels, the light, a person who is looking at the earth on this galaxy will see the light traveling 2.5 million years ago. Alright, coming from earth. Alright, so otherwise or vice versa, if a person is looking at this galaxy, the light that comes through this galaxy and passes through the telescope and into his eyes is... Okay, the light that tra the light that travels through the telescope and passes through that eye travels around 2.5 million years. All right, it traveled around the distance of 2.5 million years just to reach your eyes. Okay, so in the past, all right, so in the past, so that's the thing about this uh, galaxy that we have right here. Not only that galaxy, we have also the nearest star on Earth, which is called the Alpha Centauri. So the Alpha Centauri is 4.367 light years from Earth. Now, if you will go, uh, if you will go there, you will reach that uh, Alpha Centauri at around four years if you are traveling the same speed at light, uh, the same speed as light. All right. So that is the Alpha Centauri. Four years. All right. Four years. Next one. Uh, this is Kepler 186f. This is an exoplanet, and it has a, it has it is belong to a uh, solar system as well. All right on that particular uh, side of our uh, galaxy okay so this is kepler 186f and this is a habitable planet okay so this is a habitable planet and it is the same size as earth and it looks like earth all right it looks like the same as earth it has water it has uh, landforms on it something like that all right now if you want to go to this planet you need to travel 557 years all right. Assuming that you have a vehicle that travels at the same speed as uh, the same speed as light. All right. So because 
the distance of this planet from Earth is 557 light years. Alright, so we don't know if someone is, um, if there is an intelligent life on this planet or not. Alright, so now the most distant man-made object from Earth is the Voyager 1. Right, so this is the Voyager 1 and it was launched 35 years ago, 1977. And right now, it leaves, uh, as we speak right now, it travels all right, at around uh, 14,000. All right, at around 14,000 kilometers. All right, kilometers per second, something like that. And it is 0 0.0024, uh, 0.66636 light years from Earth. Or if you will convert that one into Earth, uh, into years on Earth, that will be uh, 24 hours only. All right, that will be around 24 hours. If you are traveling the speed of light, you will reach the position of this spacecraft at around 24 hours. All right, so more or less 24 hours. Okay, short trivia about this uh, Voyager one. So the message, all right, the message that are sent by the Voyager one. Uh, to Earth will be picked up after around uh, more or less 24 hours, all right? But the signal quality is not the same quality as it, as it was uh, sent, okay? It is uh, continually degrading as the distance increases, all right? As the distance increases, the signal from this uh, spacecraft uh, continues to degrade. So that is why here on Earth, we... Um, Okay, we are uh, we can manage to uh, transcribe that particular signal, especially if that is a picture. So that's how far, all right. That's how far this spacecraft that we have right here is from Earth. All right, that is the Voyager one. Okay, so what are these things all about? All right, what is this uh, light years and uh, other things that is re um, is this related to our topic for to topic for this science video lesson? Of course, it is. All right, light travels in a finite speed. Always rem remember that, right? Light travels in a finite speed and it has a constant speed, which we will go into discuss later. All right, so it has a constant speed. So that is why light takes time to travel from a certain position to us, a certain place, from that certain place to us. Okay, so just a short trivia, if you are looking yourself at the mirror, since light travels at a finite speed, if you are looking at self, yourself at the mirror, you are looking yourself 10 times, 10 to the negative 9 seconds ago. 10 to the negative 9 seconds ago. Not in the future, alright? Not in present, but in the past. That's how uh, finite the speed of your light is. Okay? So, what do we have right here? What is, that, what is this speed of light? Alright? What is this speed of light and what is this uh, thing all about? This is all about the physical nature of light. This is our topic today. Now, included on this topic is the characteristics of electromagnetic radiation or the characteristics of light. All right, the characteristics of light and the dual nature of light. All right, so the dual nature of light. So the dual nature of light will be talked about on the next video. All right, so today we will just talk about the characteristics of light. Alright, and also, in the next video, we will going to talk about the forms of electromagnetic waves. So, keep updated, alright? Keep updated. So, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for you to be updated with this uh, two upcoming video that, that will talk about the nature of light, the dual nature of light, and the forms of electromagnetic waves. Alright, so with that, let's answer or let's uh, find out the question that we have right here. Today, we're going to answer a certain question. What is light or what are electromagnetic waves? All right? What are electromagnetic waves? So, what are they made of? Okay. What are the characteristics of these electromagnetic waves that differs from other types of other kinds of waves? Alright? So, what makes up this electromagnetic spectrum? Okay? So, these are the things that we will going to talk about in this video lesson. Alright? So, let's go now with what are the parts of your wave. So before we go to what is electromagnetic radiation, you need to know first what are the parts of your wave. So the first one is the wavelength. All right? So the wavelength is the distance between two peaks, all right? Between two peaks or trough in a wave. All right? So later in the simulation I will just show it show that one to you. All right, next one is the frequency. Frequency is symbolized as f. By the way, wavelength is symbolized as lambda, the one that you have right here. 
lambda. This is uh, frequency f. So, how many waves pass to a given point per second? So, something like it talks about cycles. Alright, it talks about cycles. Next one, the velocity. Alright, so you, we, know, we know the velocity is the rate. Alright, we know already the velocity is the rate on how fast a given peak moves through space. Alright, so it talks about how fast a wave moves. Alright, in a certain uh, medium or uh, space. Okay, so that is the velocity. Now, in our case, um, sometimes it is symbolized as letter V. Alright, it is symbolized as V or sometimes... Okay, in our topic for today of the electromagnetic spectrum, it is symbolized as small c. So, which we will be going to talk about later, y c. Alright, so let's take a look at the simulation for you to understand what is uh, this parts of the wave that you have. Okay, so the first one is the wavelength. Alright, so the wavelength is the distance between two peaks, consecutive peaks, or two consecutive tracks. Okay, so if I happen to post this one, Right, so if I happen to pause this, by the way, this uh, simulation that I'm using right here is made possible by PHET Interactive Simulation. So uh, I just put the website in the description of this video below. So visit their website, and there are a lot of simulations that they can offer on different disciplines of science. So let's go back to the wavelength. So, what is the wavelength? All right, so what is the wavelength? The distance between the crest, all right, so this crest, okay, and this crest, okay, over here, the distance between them is called the wavelength. Not only the crest, it, but also the trough, the one at the bottom, this one, and this one is the wavelength. The distance between them is the wavelength, all right, so also with this one, okay, also with this one. All right, so that is the wavelength. Next one, uh, we have here the amplitude, which is not shown in the slide a while ago. So the amplitude is the height of the wave. So we will not work on that one. So just, uh, I just uh, tell you the definition of your amplitude. This is the height of the wave. Now if I increase the amplitude, you will notice that there is an increase in the height of your wave. Alright, so that is the increase. So if I lower down the amplitude, the height of the wave uh, decreases. Right, so that is the amplitude. So let's put this one in a constant uh, value. All right, next one is the frequency. So the frequency is how many waves passes to a certain point every second. All right, so how many waves? All right, so there is one, uh, there is one um, term there called cycles. What are cycles? Okay, this is the um, okay, this is the amount of wave passes to a certain point. Right, it's similar. It is similar to your frequency. So this is um, from this point, <clears throat> from this point down to this point. All right. So these two points that you have right here, that is one cycle. Okay, one one wave that goes up and one wave that goes down. That is one cycle. So certainly your frequency is defined as how many waves passes through a certain point per second. So how many of this wave? Alright, how many of this wave passes through a certain point per second? So if that point is this point, if that point is this point, then how many of this wave will pass through that point every second? So that will be frequency. And let's try to find out. And how about the velocity? So the velocity is um that's the uh, no, that's the description of how fast the wave is moving. Alright, that's how fast this, the wave is moving. For example, if you want to measure one peak here and you want, you want to measure the time it takes for that peak to travel from one point to starting point down to the end point of this uh, simulation, so you will get the velocity of your wave. Okay, so certainly this, uh, this property of your wave, the wavelength and then the frequency has an effect to each other. As an effect to each other. For example, if I increase the frequency, you will notice that the wavelength starts to decrease. Alright? Then, if I decrease the frequency respectively, you will notice that the wavelength starts to increase. Alright? So, certainly, there are uh, inverse... They are. The, the frequency and then the wavelength is inversely proportional. 
Alright. So as you can see, the frequency also affects how the speed of the wave is moving. Alright. The moving or the movement speed of your wave. Okay. So the frequency. But in our topic for today, the speed is constant. Okay. Unlike this wave that you have right here. The speed is constant in the topic that we will go with, uh, we have uh, we will discuss for this uh, video lesson. All right. So again, the frequency and then the wavelength of this wave is uh, inversely proportional to each other. If one goes up, the other one goes down. Okay. So let's go back to our um, slide. Next is all right. Next one is the two types of wave. So, there are two types of waves. So, we have the transverse wave and then the longitudinal wave. So, what are transverse waves? Transverse waves are waves that vibrates perpendicular to the direction of motion. Alright? So, perpendicular. So, all you need to remember here, transverse waves are a uh, vibration that is perpendicular to the wave propagation. Alright? Meanwhile, the longitudinal waves... Meanwhile, the longitudinal waves are waves that are parallel. To the direction of motion. Alright? The vibration of these waves are parallel to the direction of, mo of motion. Sometimes they are the same direction and sometimes they are opposite in direction. So, that is parallel. Right? So, same direction or even an opposite direction. So, that is the longitudinal waves. Alright? So, to see the longitudinal waves that we have right here. Alright? So, as you can see, they are completely different. Alright, they are completely different. Longitudinal waves look like this. It has uh, some areas of uh, compression. Alright, it has some areas called uh, compression. Alright, and this area is called rare fraction. Alright, so rare fraction. So, in the longitudinal waves, there is also wavelength. Alright, so the areas where two compression happens, alright, two consecutive compression happens, that is one wavelength. Alright. In the transverse wave, two consecutive crests is one wavelength. Or two consecutive trough is one wavelength. Now, this is the cycle uh, from this point and down to this point, this is one cycle. Alright. So, as you can see here, the transverse wave, as, as the wave travels up and down, alright, as the wave travels up and down, it is perpendicular to the direction of motion. Alright. So, examples of longitudinal wave is sound wave. Alright. Example of longitudinal wave is sound wave and example of transverse wave is the one that we will going to talk about in this uh, topic which is called the light or electromagnetic waves. Okay, so transverse wave is electromagnetic waves and longitudinal waves are sound waves. Alright, so that's their difference. Now, in terms of electromagnetic wave speed, unlike sound waves, Alright, unlike sound waves, sound waves is uh, affected or the velocity of the sound wave is affected by its frequency. Alright, it is affected by its frequency and as you, uh, as you decrease or increase the frequency, the wavelength will also change. Alright, but in light, alright, but in light, electromagnetic wave speed is constant. Alright, in the vacuum. Alright. If the light is moving in the vacuum, the speed of light in the vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Alright? That's the constant value. Or, okay. In some cases, it is, it is around 299,000 or 299 million. Something like that. 299 million, then the next number. I forgot the consecutive numbers after that one. So, in computation purposes, for simplicity purposes, we use 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Alright, so that's the constant speed. Now, this speed is not affected by the frequency and the wavelength of your... Right, this speed is not affected by the frequency and the wavelength of the... Okay, the wave. Alright, of your electromagnetic wave. Okay, this is constant. Now, to compute this speed of light, so you need to uh, multiply the frequency to its to the wavelength. Alright, you need to multiply the frequency and then the wavelength, then that's the time that you will get the speed of light. Now, the unit of speed of light is meter per second. That's the standard unit. Alright, and next one, the wavelength is sometimes in meters or all the time. That's the standard unit is in meters and some sample problems is looking for nanometers. 
Sometimes it's micrometers or even the radio waves can reach around kilometers. Right? So it depends on what type of wave is that. Alright? What electro, what spectrum? Alright? What electromagnetic radiation are you dealing with? Alright, next one is the frequency. In honor of Heinrich Hertz. Okay, so that's the unit of frequency, Hertz. That is 1 over second. Right, so that is 1 over second. That is the frequency or in Hertz. So multiplying them, you will get the speed of light. Alright. Now, short trivium that uh, when a light is moving through a material, the frequency stays the same. Alright. When the material or when the light is moving through a material, the frequency of the light stays the same. What is affected by the material is the speed of the light. Alright? What is affected by it is the speed. Okay, so, now, uh, in nature, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 or roughly 300,000 kilometers per second. That's the limit. There's nothing or there's no object that can go beyond that speed. Alright? So, Electromagnetic waves or light, light itself travels slowest in solid, right? And it travels fastest in gases. Alright, so unlike in sound waves, sound waves travel fastest in solid and travel slowest in gases. Alright, so that's their difference. Alright, as you can see on the table on the right side, um, the vacuum has the highest speed of light, 300,000. Now, as you move, okay, as that light, as that light moves from one medium to another, it decreases. All right, it decreases. So, for example, we have here the water, which is two hundred and twenty-six. So we have the glass, which is uh two hundred thousand, and the slowest, all right, among them is the diamond, one hundred and twenty-four. All right, so one hundred and twenty-four. So it tells us that. Okay, it tells us that not all material, okay, not all material will allow the light to travel at its fastest speed. Okay, so some of them will allow the light to travel slowest and some of them will allow the light to travel fastest. For example, the air. Alright, with that, that's the reason why we have what they call your index of refraction or the N. Alright, so the N that we have right here or also known as the index of refraction of the material. Now, how to compute for the end that we have right here? For example, um, to compute for that, you need to divide, all right? You need to get the ratio of the light, the speed of light in the vacuum and the speed of light in the material that you are, to that you, uh, are talking about, all right? So that's the ratio between them. And N is unitless, all right? N is, N is unitless. So, let's have some sample computation that we have right here. Alright, for example, the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. Alright, so you want to know the index of refraction of glass. Alright, so you want to know the index of refraction of glass. So, the, the glass that we have, alright, in the previous uh, slide, we have 200,000. Alright, so we have 200,000 kilometers per second. Right, so dividing them, all right, so dividing this, you will get 1.5 unit less. All right, so that is the index of refraction of glass. Now, doing so, all right, doing so, the index of refraction of water is 1.33, right? So what does this number mean? What does this number mean? It means that the higher the N, all right, the higher the N, the speed of light decreases. Right? And also, also, the lower the end, the speed of light increases. Alright? On that certain material. Okay? So, you, uh, you just need to take note the index of refraction. By just looking at the index of refraction, you will see the effects of it on the speed of light. Alright? So, that is the index of refraction. Alright? So, because light waves or electromagnetic waves are traveling anywhere and everywhere, alright? So, sometimes the light waves or light itself can be reflected. If it encounters a smooth object, alright? If it encounters a smooth object, it, likely to be, it is likely to be reflected, like the one that you see there in the picture, right? So, next one. 
uh, light can be transmitted. Alright? Light can be transmitted. Like the one that you have right here. Okay? So, refraction is the product when the light is being transmitted. Alright? When the light is being transmitted from a certain medium. For example, when light passes through glass, therefore, the light is transmitted on that. That is why, alright, that is why we have uh, different materials. We, get, we, we have transparent. We have translucent and we have opaque. Okay? Because of this, uh, because of this ability that light can be transmitted. Alright. Next one. Light can be absorbed. Like the one that you have right here. Now, if someone asks you why uh, leaf is green, it's because, right? Why leaf is green? It's because light, okay? All colors of the light is absorbed except for green. Alright? The green light is reflected by the leaf to your eyes so that the uh, uh your okay you can perceive that the color of the leaf is green okay so it absorbs all the colors roy and biv all right red orange yellow blue indigo violet the green is being reflected to your eyes all right so that is why we have it absorbed okay so that is what happens to the electromagnetic waves as it travels anywhere and everywhere so now let's have the def uh, the definite uh, difference between mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves are product of mechanical energy, all right? Mechanical waves are product of mechanical energy. For example, uh, water waves is an example of mechanical wave, all right? Now there's only water wave if you have wind, or if there is something going on at the tectonic plates at the bottom of the ocean, all right? You can produce a mechanical wave called tsunami. Right. Now, the electromagnetic wave is uh, is not produced by any mechanical energy but by electric, uh, electric and magnetic fields. Okay. It is produced by those two entities. Okay. That is why mechanical waves needs a medium in order to propagate. Right. It needs a medium in order to propagate while electromagnetic waves doesn't need a medium. All right, in order to propagate through a uh, certain uh, space, even without air inside the vacuum. All right, so inside the vacuum or in outer space, electromagnetic waves can travel. All right, next one. Uh, electromagnetic waves are caused by electric and magnetic fields. So just like what I've said earlier. Okay, uh, in mechanical waves. In mechanical waves, they are caused by large or small mechanical energy. Alright, to give you an example, here's how it uh, looks like. Alright, here's how it looks like. Now, if you hit a metal, okay, if you, will, if you hit a metal with enough force, okay, you will expect that the sound is also great. That the sound that it will produce will be great. Right? So, if you hit a metal with lesser force, the sound that it will produce is less. Example, the tuning fork. If you hit the tuning fork with great force, okay, if you hit the tuning fork with a lot of force, it will vibrate faster. Okay? But if you hit the tuning fork with less force, it will vibrate lesser. Or it will vibrate slower. Something like that. Okay? So that is... Uh, the mechanical wave. Another one, uh, mechanical waves are periodic disturbances. Alright? Meanwhile, the electromagnetic waves are just disturbances. Or they are continuous, to be uh, in other words. Electromagnetic waves are continuous. And mechanical waves are periodic disturbances. Only if there is a source of mechanical energy, there is a mechanical wave. If that, if that source of mechanical energy stops, if that source of mechanical energy stops, it stops this mechanical wave. Alright? So, that is why it is periodic disturbances. Alright, next one. Uh, in terms of speed, mechanical waves are low speed. Alright? Example, speed of sound in air is 333 meters per second. Alright? 333 meters per second. That's the speed of sound in air. Alright, so meanwhile, the electromagnetic waves have a uh, highest rated speed, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Alright, next one. Uh, mechanical waves can be polarized also. 
Okay, you can filter mechanical waves and also with the electromagnetic waves. You can polarize. Alright, so that will be a topic for our next video lesson, which is the dual nature of light. So, just to give you a preview about what is polarization. Polarization is somewhat like filtering. You can filter certain uh, wave, alright, certain wave uh, wavelengths of light, alright. You can filter certain wavelength of light or wave uh, uh, direction of uh, light, okay, in order for it um, not to, you know, not to be so intense, alright? Not to be so intense. Example, we have the polarized glasses, alright? So, to decrease the brightness of light, okay, you need to polarize that certain light to an extent that it will lessen the brightness of light. So, this is what polarized glasses work. How polarized, polarized glasses work, alright? So, anyway, it will be a topic for the next uh, video lesson. So, keep updated, uh, keep yourself updated on that, alright? So, that is polarized. Now, uh, before, okay, before we have this topic, people doesn't have any idea about electromagnetic waves. But they know light. Alright? But they know light. But uh, we, they don't know uh, what is light made of. Alright? They don't know. Even Isaac Newton don't know what is light made of. Alright? Until such time that this person came, uh, came to be, we have it, uh, James Clerk Maxwell, his name, and he is a physicist. Okay, he identified two things about light. Number one, what is its property? And number two is its speed. Alright, he identified both of them using the uh, following equations that you have right here, the Maxwell's equation. Alright, so the Maxwell's equation. Alright, so let me explain this Maxwell's equation in the most, uh, one of the most simple terms. As possible. All right. So the first one, the first one is all about electric field. This is an elect uh, talks about electric field. I will not tell about. I will not tell the detail. All right about this one, but it talks about electric field. Okay. What it tells about the electric field is that if there is an electric charge, that electric charge will travel to infinity as long that there is no charge nearby. Right? As long, as long that there is no charge nearby, like this one, the negative charge, instead, your charge will, uh, your electric field will go to that particular charge. Right? But if there is no charge nearby, like the one that you have right here, the charge or the electric field from that charge will travel through infinity. Okay? It will travel through infinity. And this, this equation tells us that there is... Uh, there is what they call monopoles, electric monopoles, all right? The positive and negative charge are separately, okay? They are separately in I'm called monopoles, okay? So, separate. You, we, you will not uh, see such things like this in which charges are, uh, okay, charges are uh, joined together, okay? So, you will not see something like this. Instead, this equation talks about electric monopole. Okay? Electric charge monopole. So, positive and negative charge are separate. Next one. Uh, the next equation is all about a magnetic field. Alright? Remember, remember that when you cut a magnet in half, you will just produce two north pole and two south pole. Not one north pole and another south pole. Alright? So, you... If you cut the magnet in half, you will just produce two north pole and two south pole, not the other way around. Because there is no such thing as magnetic monopole, in which uh, it looks like this, one north pole, a magnet with one north pole and one south pole, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't exist. Alright, it doesn't exist. And also, what is the zero there? If, if you have a magnet and you have a north pole and south pole, we all know that the magnetic field is moving from north pole to south pole, Alright, respectively. So, this is how the magnetic field looks like. Now, as you can see, okay, as you can see, unlike the electric field, it doesn't move through infinity. Instead, it goes back to the south pole. So, in short, this is a closed system. This is a closed system. That is why it is zero. Alright, this is a closed system. That is why it is called zero. Alright, next one. Uh, the next equation that we have right here is all about electricity. If you remember electromagnetic induction, 
Yes, you are correct. Okay, this is electromagnetic induction by Michael Faraday. Alright, so this is electromagnetic induction. So, according to that, uh, according to the statement is that changing magnetic field will cause charges to move. Alright, changing magnetic field will cause charges to move. So, that is this idea. And the fourth and final one is the Ampere's Law. Alright, in the Ampere's Law, it includes the Orsted idea of Moving charges creates magnetic field. Okay? Moving charges creates magnetic field. So, this is talking about magnetic field. In the Ampere's law, it says that the, the higher the current, the stronger the magnetic field is. And also, as you move away from the source of the magnetic field, as you move away from the center, okay, the magnetic field decreases. Right? So, the magnetic field decreases. So, remember the first right-hand rule? This one? Alright, so remember the first right hand rule, that's how it works, the Ampere's law. So, combining them all together, alright, so combining them all together, okay, to combining them all together will give you one equation, alright, to compute for the speed of light. So, that will be 1 over square root of mu naught and epsilon naught. Alright, so if you want to try, there's a... Uh, there's this symbol on your calculator that you can uh, use this one. And you will get the speed of light of around 299 million meters per second. Okay? So, you can use this formula. So, so after that, okay, after computing the speed of light, we also know that the speed or that the light itself is made up of electromagnetic waves. Because it is made up of electricity and magnetism. Alright, so it is made up of electricity and magnetism. So, in short, electromagnetic wave. Alright, so thanks to James Clerk Maxwell. Okay, we have now an idea that light is made up of electromagnetic wave. Okay. Alright, so more so, an electric charge vibrates. That's the orange one on the picture. Uh, the electric field around it creates this magnetic field. That's the purple one in the picture. So in short, as there, as there is an electric field created, if there is an electric field created, the magnetic field is also created in the first place. If a magnetic field is created, also the electric field is created as well. So as you can see, they are perpendicular to each other. This is the electric field. This is the magnetic field. Once it is created, the other one will also be created. Alright? So, it creates each other one time and time again. Alright? Repeatedly, it's uh, creating these fields. Okay? Electric field, magnetic field, electric field, magnetic field. And they are traveling in one direction. Alright? Although in this uh, thing, they, they travel in all direction. Alright? To be exact. They travel in all direction, but in this picture, it is traveling in one direction. They can they, they can travel diagonally. They can travel they can travel vertically, something like that. So in all direction, all right. So that is why there is what they call polarization. You need to eliminate this direction so that your light can travel in one direction only, right? In polarized glasses. All right, next one. Uh, don't forget that this. Electromagnetic wave that you have right here is a transverse wave. Alright? Light, right, uh, light travels, okay? The, the electric and magnetic field vibrates in right angles. Okay? And it travels perpendicular to the direction of motion. So, therefore, it is a transverse wave. Alright? So, okay. So, here we are. Okay. So, light is made up of electric, uh, electric and magnetic field. Alright? So that is why also it is also known as electromagnetic radiation. Alright, so the one that you have right here is called an electromagnetic spectrum. Alright, now what do you mean by electromagnetic spectrum? Electromagnetic spectrum is the... Okay, electromagnetic spectrum are all ranges of electromagnetic radiation. Now what are these ranges? Okay, there are two things, frequency and wavelength. Alright, frequency and wavelength, those are the ranges. It might be a range in wavelength. It might be a range in frequency. Alright? It depends. Okay. Now, if you sum up all those ranges, we call it electromagnetic spectrum. And we have a lot of this. Alright? We have gamma rays. 
Alright? We have x-ray. X-ray is different from gamma rays. Alright? So, x-ray is different from gamma ray. Also, x-ray is different from ultraviolet ray. So, this, the spectrum that you have right here is different from each other. Right? The spectrum that you see here is different from each other in terms of wavelength and frequency. Alright? They are not all the same. But, despite that they have different wavelength and uh, different frequency, they all of this spectrum that you have right here has the same speed, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. None of them, okay, none of them has the highest speed, alright? None of them has the highest speed. They have all the constant speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, alright? Alright, so visible light falls around this range, 400 to 700 nanometers, and stars, galaxies, and other objects emit light in all forms of wavelength. Alright? Stars emit gamma rays, x-rays, until radio wave. Alright? So, stars and galaxies also do that one. Okay. So, the question is, where does light came from? Right? Where does light came from? Okay. Now, light originates from, uh, from an electron that is excited. For example, you have your nucleus over here. And the nucleus is surrounded by orbitals. Now, as you can see, you have your electrons over here. Now, when an electron absorbs energy, okay, when it absorbs energy, it jumps from lower energy level to higher energy level. Okay, like so. Alright, so once the electron is on the highest energy level, it will lose that energy. Okay, it will lose that energy and goes back to its original place. Alright. When it does, okay, when it goes back to its original place, it gives off light. Alright? That light is uh that light that it gives off depends on how far, okay, how high the level that your electron went through. Alright? So if the if the energy level is here, right? The higher the energy level it went through, the, the color of the light is dependent on that energy level. Right? So, that is how the light is produced. Okay? In the first place. But if you were going to ask me how the light came from, or where the light came from in the first place, okay, one answer is Big Bang. And after that, I don't know. Okay? So, one light... Uh, the light that travels, okay, the light, the light that travels from uh, the universe, okay, the light travels at around 4.6 billion, alright, billion years, alright, billion years ago. So, in short, the light travels on that time span, okay, since the beginning of time. It travels at around 4.6 billion years in the past. So, it means that uh, I don't know if the big, okay. I don't know if the big bang is the one that produces the first light in the universe. All right. So certainly, all right. The answer there is I don't know. That's one good thing about science. All right. That's one good thing about science, guys. All right. The more that you don't know uh, something, the more that you are curious. Right. The more that the more that you are curious. Okay. So there you go. Okay. How light is produced? Okay, so where's the light coming from? Alright, so that, that's... Um... Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, this is what our Milky Way looks like at different spectrum. Alright, so we have here the radio waves, the microwave, uh, the far infrared. Probably the far infrared is the, the red. Alright, okay, the red part. Alright, so the, the last part. Okay. Okay, so of your infrared uh, wavelengths. Alright, next one, near infrared. So this is the starting point, alright, of the infrared wavelength. Okay, next one, we have the ultraviolet, the hydrogen alpha. Alright, so ultraviolet. Next one, we have the, <coughs> we have the visible spectrum. Alright, so we have the visible spectrum or the visible light and the x-ray. Right, so the same X-ray that you use to visualize the bones in your body. Right, next is the gamma ray. All right, so okay, you can see our galaxies in uh, in our galaxy in different uh, spectrum of light. 
Alright. By the way, alright, uh, by the way, the light, okay, the eye itself, our eyes are evolved into a special way that we can appreciate this range of spectrum. We call it the visible light, the 400 to 700 nanometer range. Alright? So, our eyes evolve in that way so that we can perceive these colors, alright, that we have right over here. Okay? So, we can uh, appreciate what is uh, around us, what are the color of the things that we can see around us. Okay? So, thanks to evolution, okay, for that. Okay? So, next one. Okay, so light is characterized by a uh, wavelength. Okay? Light is characterized by a wavelength. So, as you can see, uh, if white light passes through prism, it will undergo diffraction. Alright? It will undergo diffraction or bending. Alright? It will undergo bending and it will produce these Roy Gbib colors that you have right here. Violet being the lowest uh, frequency, uh, lowest wavelength. Alright? And the highest wavelength is the red. So that is why violet is the most bent, right? Most bent light. Okay, so the least bent is the, okay, the least bent is the red, right? So the least bent is the red light, right? So more so, more so, if you are going to filter, right? If you are going to filter any of this color of light that you have right here, you will produce the color, the same color of light. For example. I will go into filter yellow only and then pass it through the prism. Now, if you have an idea, if you have an idea that yellow will produce another Roy G. Beam, well, you are wrong. Because if you uh, filter this yellow light over the prism, it will still produce yellow. Alright? So, that's uh, meaning to say that the yellow light, Alright, that the yellow light that you have right here is the unique color of light in that particular wavelength. Okay, that part you cannot anymore, okay, you cannot anymore filter that particular wavelength of light. Alright, so more so if you filter red, it will produce red. If will if you filter violet, it will it will produce violet. Okay. Alright, so this is the different colors of light in uh, different uh, wavelengths. Alright, so we have yellow to green around 600 to 630 nanometers, uh, 470 to 550 all shades of blue. Alright, so all shades of violet, so all shades of violet we have 660 nanometers. Alright, it was represented by Queen Elizabeth. Alright, alright, so we have right here the effect of light uh, in our perception. Alright, of things. For example, okay, if you see, okay, if you happen to see this one, um, you have two colors. One is gray and the other one is white at the bottom. But, but if you put your finger at the middle of this picture, if you put the, your finger at the middle of this picture, you will see they are just one color. Right? You will see that they are just one color. So that is the effect of light. So that's the, that's the use of light in arts. Alright? That's the use of light in arts. Okay? You cannot shade colors without lighting effects. Alright? You cannot shade color without light. Alright? Light helps you to appreciate different shades of colors. Alright? So that is what this uh, picture is all about. Okay? Light effects. Alright? Alright. So we have now the frequency. We have now the wavelength. We have now the velocity. And the uh, final property of light that we have right here is its energy right so the energy so uh looking at it okay looking at it the light with the light with lowest wavelength right the light with the lowest wavelength which is red has lower relative energy meanwhile the light that has short okay the light that has higher frequency has higher energy so, in short, energy is directly proportional to frequency. So, it means that, it means that if you increase the, if you increase the frequency, right? So, if you increase the frequency, you will increase also the energy of your light, right? Of that certain uh, electromagnetic wave. Meanwhile, the wavelength, Energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. So, what does it mean? 
Okay? So, if you increase the wavelength, right? If you increase the wavelength, you decrease the energy. Just like what happened here. Red has the, no? Red has the highest wavelength, right? Red has the highest wavelength, but relatively, it has low energy, right? It contains low energy, right? So, that is the... Okay, so that is why uh, energy is part of your uh, properties of light. Okay? Alright, so that particular part, this part, was uh, explained by Max Planck. Later, I will show, the, uh, will show you the picture of Max Planck. And he explained the relationship between intensity and the wavelength of radiation. Also, he, uh, he gave an idea that, uh, he gave an idea that, Electromagnetic radiation color depends on temperature. Alright? So, the higher the temperature, there will be a color corresponding to that certain temperature. Alright? So, also, he gave up the term quantized. Quantized. So, what does, uh, what does the word quantized mean? What does this word mean? It means, so, uh, quantized means to subdivide, such as energy, into a small but measurable Increments. So that is why he described that the light is made up of packets of this energy, right? He made uh, he made a term or he made uh, an idea that the light is made up of these packets of energy. All right, next one. Planck's also developed an equation which we will going to use uh, later in the sample problem. Uh, he gave an idea that um, he gave an idea that um, the energy is proportional to the frequency. Of that vibration right so the energy of that vibration is proportional to the frequency of that vibration right so how does it look like it looks like this right energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency so E is in joules that's the standard unit of energy joules next one the H is the Planck's constant which is joules per second so, what is the constant? Uh, what is the constant under the Planck's constant? What's the value? That is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. That is the Planck's constant. Always remember that. Okay, so this will become handy. This is handy when you are doing some computations regarding the energy of the light. Alright? The energy of the electromagnetic wave. Alright, so more so, this is what I'm talking about. Red being the coolest, all right? Coolest of the color and white being the hottest. Why white? Because the white light, okay, so the white glow that you have right here means to say that this material is already absorbing all colors of light, right? It is absorbing all colors of light. It doesn't reflect anymore any, uh, any color of light. It absorbs that color, that color of light, right? So... Or rather, it reflects. Alright, so it reflects. So that is why you can see white. Okay, you can see white here. Next one, uh, the, the red is hot and hotter, orange, something like that. Okay. So next one, uh, we have here the uh, Einstein's photon. Alright, so remember that Max Planck, right? Remember that Max Planck describes the light as made up of packets of energy. Alright, Einstein uh, gave. Okay, uh, describe that packets of energy called photons. Alright? So, the packets of energy is called photons. So, okay? After all this time, light is also a particle, not a wave. Alright? Okay, so, aside from being a wave, it is also a particle. So, which one it should be? Alright? So, okay, according to Einstein, it is also a particle. Alright? It's made up of photons. Okay, the number of photons depends on the, num uh, the intensity of light. Alright, the number of photons depends on the intensity of light. So, next one. Photoelectric effect. According to him, that if you uh, subject any metal to a uh, light, alright, if you strike a light on a metal surface, an electron will be ejected on that metal. Alright, so some uh, automated door uses that idea. Okay, uh, solar panels, okay, solar panels, and also the, okay, solar panels, solar powered calculator is also using this particular idea called photoelectric effect, right? So, photoelectric effect. So, just to show you how it looks like, 
Okay, so this is the simulation about the photoelectric effect. So I have right here, right, so I have right here a lamp that uh, gives off light at different uh, wavelengths. All right, and a metal over here. All right, so let's choose a metal that will be our uh, subject on this side. Okay, so the goal is to produce a current on that metal. If there is an electron that is being ejected, if there is an electron that is being ejected on this process, then therefore, current will be produced. All right, current will be produced on this uh, wire over here. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look. So let's use uh, platinum. Right, let's use platinum that. Okay, so as you increase the intensity of light, as you can see, there are a lot of electrons going through at this wavelength. Alright, so at this wavelength, guys. Right? Now, but with, uh, but you, if you decrease the intensity of light, there is no, there are no electrons that are produced. Okay, so the current stops. Okay, so the current stops. So, more so, if you, okay, if you uh, increase the wavelength from ultraviolet to infrared, which has the highest wavelength of them all, there are no electrons that are produced. So remember that the lower the wavelength, the higher the frequency. And the higher the frequency, the higher the energy. So therefore, at this wavelength, all right, at this wavelength, your light contains a lot of energy. Okay, so that is why photoelectric effect is possible, right? So, this particular simple experiment that you have right here, this simple experiment that you have right here, talks about that light is also a particle. Alright? More than a wave, it is also a particle. Okay. So, let's go back now. That is the photoelectric effect. Okay, again, uh, that simulation, the, the one that I used earlier, is made possible by PHET Interactive Simulation. Right, so let's go now to the next part. Now, what happens to energy as the frequency increases? To sum it all up, okay, so let's uh, change this one to F so, so we will not be confused. What happens to energy as the frequency increases? Therefore, the energy will increase. So they are directly proportional to each other. Now, what happens to the energy as the wavelength increases? Okay, so the energy uh, decreases. Alright, so the energy decreases as the wavelength increases. So that is inversely proportional. More so, you can use this formula, you can use this one in different situation. Alright, if you have a uh, something like a, something to compute. Alright, about the energy of light and the wavelength is given but not the frequency and so on and so forth. Alright, so with that, let's go now to the sample problems. Alright. Let's use those equations or let's use those variables that we have encountered earlier to solve some sample problems that we have right here. Okay, starting with this one. Uh, a laser emits light of frequency of 4.74 times 10 to the 14 hertz. What is the wavelength of light in nanometer? Right, so to solve for this one, right, so to solve for this one, so the given is, okay, so the given is, um, Okay, we have the frequency which is 4.74 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Okay, next one is uh, the wavelength. The wavelength is missing and the speed of light is uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Alright, so you can post this video. Alright, so guys, you can post this video if you want uh, before I reveal the answer. Okay, so... So what will be uh what will be the formula that we will going to use? We will use the formula you encountered in the first place. So we have it right here, and arranging them we get uh will give you this one. Okay, so uh we have here the speed of light. So we have three meters per second, and the exponent of eight is on the other side, and also we have the four point seventy four, right? So four point seventy four hertz. Okay, and the exponent, uh, basic math, alright, so the exponent, I will just put it up here. So, from positive, I will uh, make it negative 14. Right, so more so, our frequency will be, right, so our frequency for that is 3 divided by 4.74, right, 
That is uh, 0 0.0.6329. Alright, times 10 to the... Alright, times 10 to negative 6. Alright. So, uh, you just change the decimal place. So, the frequency... Okay, for uh, the frequency that we are looking for is 6. Point, uh, don't forget to change it in nanometers. Alright, to change it in nanometers. So, this one will be divided to 10 to the negative 9. So, remember that 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to the negative 9 meters. Right, so divided by 10 to the negative 9, so it will give you the frequency of 633 nanometers. Right, so the complete answer is the wavelength of light is 633 nanometers. Okay, so that is the first sample problem. Right, next one. Okay, so this is a very, uh, somehow difficult problem compared to the other one. Okay, because it uh, has the energy now. Okay, now. A certain electromagnetic wave has a wavelength of 625 nanometers. What is the frequency of the wave? Alright, so what is the frequency of the wave and what is the energy of the wave? Alright, so let's uh, write those given values that we have right there. Okay, so we have the wavelength of 625 nanometers. Okay, and uh, the Speed of light is uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, we are asked to find out what is the frequency and what is the energy. Alright, don't forget the Planck's constant is also uh, given. Alright, so Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to negative 34 joules per second. Alright, okay, so the energy is missing, so how do we compute this one? Okay, so how do we uh, solve this one? Okay, you can pause the video before I reveal the answer. Alright, so let's have this one. Uh, how do we compute for this one? So first one is uh, we will going to use this formula. Alright, so to compute for the frequency, so we find the uh, C over uh, wavelength. Okay, so we have here uh, the frequency. We have uh, 3 meters per second times uh, the 8 over here and divided by by the 6 to 5 okay so i don't need to change it into meters all right so i just put here uh meters and the, the negative 9 from nanometers i just put it up here plus 9 all right so 6 to 5 nanometers so the negative 9 there i just uh put it on the top okay so that is basic math Okay, so the frequency is, alright, so the frequency will be uh, 3 over 6 to 5. That will be, okay, 4.8. Alright, that will be 4.80 times 10 to the negative 3. Then we have 8 plus 9. That will be 17. Alright, so plus 17. So the frequency for letter A is 4.80 times 10 to negative or positive 14 rather hertz right so there you go now now that we have the frequency all right now that we have the frequency we can now solve for the energy using this particular formula anyway you can use okay you can solve this one even without the frequency all right you can solve this one even without the frequency you can use this formula if you want to right c over wavelength Right, so you can use this formula too. Okay, so in this case, we can now solve for the energy. So the energy is uh, is equal to okay, six point six two six, right, joules per second divided by all right. Uh, what do we get? Uh, four point eighty. All right, four point eighty um uh, hertz. Okay, so where are the exponents? So we have uh, negative thirty four plus fourteen. Right, so what is the energy? Okay, so 6.626 times, uh, okay, times uh, 4.8, that will be uh, 31.80 times 10 to the negative 20. Alright, so we just move one decimal, alright, we just move one decimal to get the correct answer. 3.18 times 10 to negative 19. 
3.18 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So that is the answer for letter B. What is the energy of the wave? 3.18 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Alright, so next, next uh, we go to the next problem. Alright, another sample problem. Okay, so a certain microwave has a wavelength of 0 0.032 meters. Calculate the frequency of this uh, wavelength. Right? So, calculate the frequency of this wavelength. So, in order to compute for that one, right, so in order to compute for that one, so we have, um, okay, the wavelength, all right, so the given here is the wavelength, so which is 0 0.032 meters. And the frequency is uh, the one that is asked, and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, now, you can pause this video, all right, if you want. So, to compute for this one, we have um, this formula, and we are looking for the frequency, okay? So, we have here the C over wavelength, then we have 3 meters per second, right? Raised to 8, divided by 0 0.032 meters, alright? So, cancel the meters, then you will get 1 over a second, or the hertz, Okay, so the answer will be V over 0 0.032, that is 93.75. 93.75 times 10 to the 8. Alright, so since this is not the correct answer, so we can arrange by moving the decimal. So the frequency is 9.38 times 10 to the 9 hertz. Alright, so... Does it make sense? Okay, does it make sense? Yes, it, it, uh, the answer makes sense because as you decrease the wavelength, the frequency increases. Alright, so as you decrease the wavelength, the frequency increases. Alright, so that is the third sample problem. Let's go to the, sec, uh, the fourth sample problem. Alright, so the energy for quantum of light is 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. What is the wavelength of this light? Right. So again, uh, we like the given uh, facts that we have right here. Okay, so what are the given facts? So we have uh, the energy only. Right, so the energy only is 2.84 times 10 to negative 19 uh, joules. Alright, so there you go. Right, so next one is uh, there is no frequency, there is no wavelength. Alright, the wavelength is the one that we are looking for. Right. Now, there is a Planck's constant, so we have 6.626 times 10 to negative 34 joules second. Next one, we have uh, the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, uh, you can pause this video, alright? So, in this case, we will now going to use the formula, alright, directly, we will not, uh, we will not go anywhere else, alright? We will use this formula directly since the wavelength is the one we are looking for. Now, arranging the, this formula, if you arrange this formula, you will get the formula for wavelength as Planck's constant times the speed of light over energy. Right? So, let's uh, plug in those uh, for, um, numbers. So, we have 6.626 joules per second times... The speed of light of 3 meters per second over here, then 8, then uh, negative 34, okay, there you go, over, okay, over, uh, what is the, the energy? So, 2.84 joules, then I will put that negative 19 on top, alright, so I will put that ne negative 19 on top, making, making it positive 19, alright, so positive 19, so what is the answer here? Okay. So, just cancel first the unit, uh, joules, cancelled, seconds, cancelled. So, since we are looking for the wavelength, alright, so the answer should be in meters, so which is uh, correct. Alright, so 6.626 times 3, divided by, or rather divided by 2.84. Okay, so the answer is, uh, the answer is 6.999, or roughly 7. Right, so 7, okay, times uh, 10, alright, times 10 raised to, alright, so 9, 
Okay, so 27 minus 34. That is negative 7. Alright, so the answer is, alright, so the answer for this problem, the wavelength is, okay, 7 times 10 to negative 7 meters. Okay, you don't need to change it to nanometers because on the problem, there is no such uh, question that asking you to change it in nanometers. Alright, so the wavelength of light is 7 times 10 to the negative 7 nanometers. Alright, so... That is for the fourth problem. Okay, now let's go to the last problem. Okay, now, uh, why sky is blue? Alright, that question will be answered on our next video lesson about the dual nature of light. Alright, so the blue sky color is the result of scattering of sunlight by air molecules. Alright, the blue light has the frequency of 7.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Alright. And we are asked to calculate the wavelength, all right? And also, we are asked to calculate the energy, all right? The energy that is uh, uh, coming from that uh, blue light, okay? So, let's write the given values that we have right here. Okay, so the given value is only the frequency. We have 7.5 times 10 raised to 14 hertz. Okay, the speed of light is uh, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Also, the Planck's constant is 6.6 to 6 times 10 to the uh, raised to negative 34 joules per second. So, the answer, uh, we are looking for the wavelength and also the energy of this wave. Alright, so again, you can pause the video. Alright, so... In this case, we were going to use, we were going to have a separate co uh, calculation. First thing is to compute for the wavelength. Alright? So, to compute for the wavelength is, we were going to use this uh, formula. So, wavelength is equal to speed of light over the frequency. Alright? So, more so, we have 3 meters per second raised to 8 divided by uh, the frequency of 7.5 hertz. Right, so the 14 will go up there, so negative 14. So we have uh, 3 over 7.5, 7.5, that is uh, 0 0.4. 0 0.4, so 8, uh, 14 is negative 6, times 10 to negative 6. All right, now we, if you arrange this one, if you arrange this one, the correct answer is the wavelength should be uh, 4.0. Right, so 4.0 times 10 raised to negative 7. Right, so negative 7, what is the unit? Right, so it should be in nanometers. All right, so it should be in nanometers. So this is in meters. All right, so this is in meters. So we need to divide it by 10 to the negative 9. Right, so 10 to the negative 9. So 0 0.4 and uh, raised to negative 6 over. Uh, 10 to negative 9. Alright, so the answer is uh, the wavelength that you have right here is 400 nanometers. Right, so the wavelength is 400 nanometers. Okay, so that is for the wavelength. Now, how about for the energy? Alright, so how about for the energy? We can use this formula. Alright, so we can use this formula to compute for the energy that we are looking for. So, more so, we have uh, energy equal to 6.626 joules per second times the frequency of 7.5 hertz all right so these are the these are the exponents so we have negative 34 then the the frequency is 14 plus 14 right so uh, if you will compute this one you will get times 7.5 Alright, so that will be uh, 49.7, alright, so 49.7 times 10 raised to negative 20, alright, so raised to negative 20. So, uh, adjusting the decimal, the energy, right, so by the way, I forgot to box this one, the energy of your wave, based on this question, is 4.97 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Right, so that is the energy. So let's take a look if our answer does make sense. 
All right. As the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases, which is correct. Right? As the frequency increases, the energy increases, which is directly proportional and also correct. All right. So these are the sample problems that you might uh, encounter. All right. When you are dealing with uh, electromagnetic waves. So don't forget, uh, we have the wavelength, we have the frequency and the speed of light and also the energy. So don't forget the relationship of those four uh, variables that we have right here. Okay. And with that, let's wrap up the video lesson that we have in this session. All right. So what are electromagnetic waves? So we will, uh, this, we will, uh, uh, we will chop down that particular question into a more specific, uh, more specific questions. So let's start with the first question, how they are formed. All right. So how electromagnetic waves are formed? The, the electromagnetic waves are made up of vibrating charges. All right. These are made up of vibrating charges that travels through space. All right. The travel through space and it doesn't require a medium. All right. It doesn't require to me a medium for it to be propagated. Okay. So that's how they are formed, the electromagnetic waves. What kind of wave is the light or the electromagnetic waves? Electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. They are made up of alternating electric and magnetic fields. All right. And finally, is a wave a particle or is an elect is the electromagnetic wave a particle or a wave? All right. It is a wave and sometimes it acts like or it becomes a particle. All right. If you are not looking at it. All right. So it behaves as both. Okay. Wave and a particle. Light is a wave and light is also a particles. All right. So with that, okay, with that, that ends up our... All right, that ends up our video lesson for this uh, session. So I hope the lesson is um, makes you interested about electromagnetic spectrum and its uh, practical applications and uh, purposes. All right, so guys, uh, if you learned, okay, if you value this lesson or if you learned something about this lesson, don't give, uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button of this video. All right. Uh, subscribe to my channel and um, hit the notification bell. All right. So if you want to be updated, especially the next video that we will have right here is the dual nature of light. So if you want to be updated with that uh, with that video, so don't forget to hit the notification bell. Now, if you have question regarding the video or there's something wrong about the video, yeah, just write it in the comment section below. All right, so that ends up our uh, video lesson for today. So take care everyone and peace out. Baka mi tai kodomo na no ne yume wo ootte kizu tsuite 嘘が